Kurt Angle was on Joe Rogan's podcast talking about various things, but the biggest news to really come out of that is just how injured Kurt currently is and how badly he's been, how hurt he's been working for nearly 30 years now. So the quote is, I always had problems with my motor skills in my hands. I broke my neck four more times in the WWE. This is after he broke his neck initially in the Olymp- uh, while doing the Olympics in 96. And it got worse and worse. I mean, I have nerve damage in my neck. I lost three inches in both arms and they atrophied because my neck was just so messed up. I've had five surgeries and none of them have really worked. I'm going to end up having to have fusion, which will be down the line. I have nerves that are being pinched and they're not being able to flow down my arms, so my fingers are freezing cold. They're always cold. I don't have any circulation. This is all the extra skin because of what the size of my arms used to be. I'm barely making it right now. My arms are 15 inches now. They used to be 18 or 19 inches. I'm struggling right now. Also in the video, he talks about attempting to do stem cell research and his neck is so messed up even the stem cell research hasn't helped. So, uh, just the complete physical mess that Kurt Angle is in these days. Well, he was a great worker. He was a great amateur he was a great interview, turned in some great matches. But I hate to hear that he's in the shape that he's in because he never took a night off. I mean, Kurt would go out there and he would give you 110% every night. And I've seen him take I've seen him take some spills, some bumps that were like ungodly. So, but I do remember being around Kurt, and he will admit this that he got he got addicted to opiates, opioids. And he told me one day that before he got up in the morning, he took like 10 Percocets or 10 Vicodins or something. I'm thinking, 10? I mean, if I took 10, it's over for me. I, I couldn't do it. But he built up a resistance to it and that's what he that's what he had to have to just move through the day so i i feel for him and i hope he's okay but if he's in that condition now how old is kurt early 50s i think something like that well Hey, I'm not in too good shape myself, but at least I can move around a little bit, and the pain is not all that bad. Yeah, fifty-four. But we're all we're we're all in pain, mm -hmm. all in pain, because you can't take that stuff for years. You can't take these bumps for years and years and years, and not damage something in your body. So even a guy that's only stayed in for five years. Yeah. I'm sure he'd tell you that he has his knee hurts, his hip hurts, his lower back hurts, his shoulder, side, his neck. And these are your really your critical joints that you have to have to, to live a normal life. But I hope he's okay. And I love Kurt. Great guy. And I hope he's okay. He's 54 now. I'm going to ask this one last question, then we're going to get Bobby on. Someone advanced this recently. I don't know where it was. I read it. And maybe they're right. Is that Kurt Angle actually had his best run in TNA and not WWE, including having his best matches. What do you think? Well, I didn't follow him in WWE, really. He was... And when TNA got him, and I don't think I'm talking out of school when I say this, but Kurt Angle left WWE without a 90-day no-compete clause. They waived it. Mm -hmm. You know what that told me? <laughs> it told me that he was in such a condition that they were afraid that he would die on their watch. He told me that. So they wanted just, just to get him away. They wanted to, they wanted him gone. So he finished up on new year's night at 12 o'clock Eastern time. And we went with that show at 12 o'clock Eastern time. 
he'd only been released from WWE for like, like from one year to the next, it didn't roll over to the next year. And that year rolling into the, to the next one, I forgot what year this was. And he was on the show. So they waived the, the whole 90 day compete clause. So, and there was a lot of theories about it, but that, that was my theory. I, I think they didn't care. They didn't, they just wanted him gone because they, he was in such bad shape at that time. Well, TNA must have known this, surely. I mean, oh, they, that, that no, really can't, no, the, that does not paint them in a good light whatsoever. No, they, 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 they knew this exactly. They wanted a name that they could get that would get people talking. Even, even if the, he might die on their watch. I, I find that crazy. Like, well, a, like trying to compete with WWE, basically pick up somebody who WWE has gotten rid of because they can't help him anymore as far as his drug addiction goes. And then I don't even know how much TNA tried to help him with the drug addiction, but he had issues in TNA for years as well. This is all public. We're not talking. Telling tales out of school, and Kurt's talked about it as well. But the fact that TNA and Dixie picked Kurt Angle up when he was deep in the sickness of addiction is, I'm going to say this, almost a desperation move. And Kurt was great yeah. in TNA and stuff, absolutely. But still, I mean, that's that's an issue. But I will say one thing for Kurt. He performed. He performed when he was there. And in 2007, 2008, when he was there, Booker T was there, Scott Steiner, and the knockouts, AJ Styles. That was their best years. Mm. And sometimes it was the, TNA to me was one of the most non functioning <laughs> companies I've ever been around. But somehow we made it go and we found a method to the madness and we made it work for a while anyway. And I think the knockouts really was a, a, the big cause, a big cause for that. Yeah, they had 141 and a third percent chance of failure, and yet they're still here in 2023. 20, yeah. yeah, yes, yes. 